Hello soil lovers, I'm just down at my grandparents house and I wanted to show you the garden that I grew up in and uh, you know sometimes reading and hearing stories about retro suburbia kind of feels a bit weird as a movement because as you can see behind me this is the veggie patches that I grew up with all my life. We have no grass here uh, in a suburban block in Reservoir. So let me take you for a little bit of a walk around of what this garden looks like. So the first thing you'll notice is that there is absolutely no grass, none whatsoever. Every centimetre of uh, land that you can possibly plant something on has been converted to these uh, little veggie patches with corridors. And so every part of the year there is different things growing. Um, I grew up with tomatoes always being on this side. This is before tomato season, which is not now to make sauce. But as you can see, there is just things growing everywhere. And unfortunately, when my grandparents do a lot of gardening, they, have, they come from the school of neat and tidy. So I just had a bit of a chat to my grandfather now and seeing all these so-called weeds, or as I like to call them, repair plants, actually really makes them angry. And see, I see this as the way that the soil is repairing itself. If you understand how soil and plants and capturing the sunlight works, each one of these green little leaves is a solar panel that's actually catching the energy from the sun and putting it into the ground as a form of sugars and carbohydrates. And so these, these plants, even though some of them might look like weeds, are actually repairing the soil and building up the carbon um, matter, organic matter in the soil. So very, very good. But they're just so used to neat and trim. So these, these will be gar um, garlics or onions. I think they're garlic actually. Could be onion. Hard to tell from my eye right here. But you can see everything's in straight lines, neat and trim. So these are some peppers. But let's go to the back of the shed. So this is the garage, which is no, is actually a kitchen. But let's go towards the back. So now we're at the back of the shed. So there's a big water tank and lots of smaller water tanks collecting rainwater off the roof there. So it comes around here and gets stored into water barrels. And this is a big one. Uh, there was a pump underneath there that is used to water everything. But if you look behind me, there is lots of grass and weeds. And because my grandparents are becoming older, they're not able to be as fit uh, in the garden anymore. So letting beds go like this actually makes them really angry but knowing what I know about soil health now and how the soil repairs itself this is actually great ground cover because it's protecting the soil from the harsh sun that bakes it and kills the organisms the fungi the bacteria that's living in the soil and these plants and the ground cover is actually repairing putting carbohydrates back into the soil so this is magic to my view but painful to their view which is all the importance of your paradigm and the way that you see the world through your glasses but what i want to show you here is the chickens. so let's go visit the chickens so in here is the chickens they think i'm probably going to feed them they are locked up for safety but they are actually allowed to come out through this little corridor, protected cage corridor, because there's been a couple of fox incidences now. And then they kind of free range in this area, which has got lots of grass. There's um, some figs growing, which is very common in Italian back gardens. This is somewhat seen as a, a pest plant out in, 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 in Melbourne, Australia and parts of the world. But here it's growing nice. There'll be lots of fruit that yields from here. And this, this, this tree here is a fig tree. And so the chickens get to free range around here. They get garden scraps. Uh, they get um, a very good diet and so the eggs that come from these chickens are quite quite good but um, unfortunately they are having to be kept indoors these days um, so this is a purpose-built chicken pen and and these are the bamboo shoots so my grandfather grows these bamboo shoots and the reason why he does these is he cuts them and then dries them out and these become the stakes so he uses these to um, hold up other plants or mainly beans you do like the tripod um, triangle um, setup with uh, with beans so that's you know everything kind of is created from the garden so you can see lots of different trees these figs are now being left for the birds um, even though there's an owl there to scare the birds away but yeah definitely birds are enjoying these figs look at the rich color in that 
So as a child, um, the this is a grape vine that's growing over. Uh, this creates shade in the summer to protect the garage to keep it nice and cool, and then uh, it create it, all the leaves drop in winter to let as much light as possible in, and uh, this will be filled with grapes that all hang from here, and that's what gets captured and turned into wine. So there's so many different trees here. There's plums behind me. Is like a mandarin tree. It could even be a no, that's just mandarin, but sometimes there's like fruit salad trees where the, each branch is different. There's a lemon tree behind me over there. Um, and this is in suburbia. This is not regional anywhere. This is in the middle of the suburbs uh, of Reservoir, uh, which is where a lot of the settlement happened. This used to be a pear tree, but then it died, but it's still there as a bit of an art. And my grandmother has all her flowering plants here for the bees and so forth. And this behind me is an apple tree, which had really good apple this year um, and a really good yield. So that's been really good. But I want to go to the front yard to show you that even in the front yard, there is uh, some uh, unique bits of uh, every, like I said, every part. Uh, it's actually the only part with a bit of grass, but also has some olive trees. So I'll show you that as well. So here we are at the front of the yard. So this is the only part that has a little bit of grass. But as you can see, there's some really big olive trees. And if you've been following my Instagram account, you'll see that a couple of weeks ago, uh, we posted some photos of um, olives being turned cured. Um, but there was a third tree there as well. But unfortunately, a car came through uh, the fence and knocked it out. Um, so they were devastated because this is years and years of olives establishing in the front yard and when I was younger The edges where there is a little bit of soil was also used to, to have artichokes to have tomatoes Whatever so as they uh, become a bit older, they're no longer able to nurture all that So now just the olive trees stay there. Look at the size of that. Amazing. Now I just quickly popped into the garage where you could see there's shelves and shelves of to homemade tomato sauce There'd be like jars of pickled uh, items, lots of jars and bottles ready for recycling. But every Italian household has a garage that's converted into a kitchen. Um, so this is where a lot of the cooking gets done. And as you can see, there's lots of peppers, apples, persimmons, peppers. And uh, here's some more. This is the olive making happening under here. So that's, you know, with the salt curing them. So yeah, that's just a little bit of my upbringing, a little bit of a tour of my childhood retro suburbia. So I hoped you enjoyed this video, just seeing a little bit of a glimpse into like my childhood. Unfortunately, you know, we didn't play any soccer, we didn't get to play any tennis. And if we did and the ball went in the garden, that's it. It was an instant out. And you normally have your grandfather chasing you with a broom because you damaged a leaf or wrecked a tomato or uh, causing havoc. So this was the childhood that I grew up in. Uh, lots of produce growing everywhere. In fact, that, um, that over there is like a fire pit and that's where uh, we do all the cooking of the tomato sauce and the tomatoes and, and, and uh, being able to you know, burn fires to roast peppers and so forth. So really interesting childhood, something that I took a lot for granted when I was younger. I uh, never realised that what I had in my own backyard is what a lot of people you know, aspire to to achieve uh, in their own little suburban, um, retro suburbia journey. So, uh, you know, I was gifted, I guess, with the upbringing of knowing, oh, there's my grandfather <laughs> walking in the background. Um, at 91, still, you know, somewhat nurturing the garden, but with help with his sons and, and nieces and nephews and so forth. Um, never realised the advantage I would have by learning how to make salami, how to make tomato sauce, seeing, you know, the wine um, brewing process um, and uh, being able to really create you know, that as a knowledge foundation, which a lot of people now pay for to attend workshops and classes. Anyway, I've got to go. He's talking to me, not realising I'm making a video. Take care, everyone. Enjoy your retro suburbia journey. And until next time, get outside, get your hands dirty and dig deeper into these beautiful soils. Take care. Regen Ray for Farming Secrets.